Greetings and welcome back to Inkari. It's time. I'm Kondus, your host. Today we're diving into the latest political buzz shaking South Africa. The Brent Test Foundation recent survey reveals an intriguing preference among South Africans for an ANC-DA-MPC coalition. But the burning question remains, which South Africans are in favor of this preference? Let's break it down. The Brent Test Foundation, in collaboration with SABI Strategy, conducted a comprehensive survey revealing that 40.2% of respondents favor an ANC-DA-MPC coalition. These coalitions outstrips other potential partnerships, including an ANC-MK party coalition at 19.5% and an ANC-EFF coalition at 11.5%. But these numbers only tell part of the story. To understand the full picture, we need to ask which South Africans are behind these preferences. I wouldn't say that the ANC is better off with the DA alone. Um, I, I doubt whether that would work, especially the optics of it would not work because you have people in the ANC who would believe that um, a coalition with the DA is selling out uh, to white monopoly capital and all of that kind of speech. Um, uh, and there's a whole lot of uh, racial um, inferences around uh, cooperating with the DA, which might make the ANC uncomfortable. But there is that agreement that the two of them have about the importance of the constitution, which an agreement which the EFF and the uh, MK, for example, don't share. But there are other smaller parties that don't have numerical advantage that believe in the constitution. Uh, your centrist parties like Bosa, Rise Mzanti, Bantu Holomisas, UDM, uh, and others uh, 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 might agree with the ANC and the DA on the importance of the constitution. They might differ on other policies, but the most important thing here is to anchor a deal around the, the, the constitution because it's the founding document of the republic. If I look at the march of anti-constitutionalist parties and parties that are very market unfriendly, I think what I would like to see happening is constitutionalists and people who believe in, uh, in, in, uh, in the market to be able to join hands and form a bulwark against the radical policies of the anti-constitutionalists, which I think will have devastating consequences for South Africa's economy, its democracy and its socio-economic fabric were they to get into power. So is that putting the EFF aside then, putting the MK aside? Correct. I think that if one looks at what they campaigned on, nationalization, abolition of private property ownership, uh, MK campaigned to scrap the constitution, to replace the judiciary with a sovereign mm -hmm. parliament, these are all deeply anti-democratic, uh, anti-progress right. um, uh, policies. and. Uh, we would stand completely against those. So if, if that is sort of where you draw the line, what is the permutation then in your mind that would be the most beneficial for this economy right now? Well, is it I, a DA, a, a, ANC? Well, I think it's, I, I definitely think it is a coming together of the constitutionalists and there are, there are a variety of options. Is that the DA options. and the ANC? Yeah, it's the DA, mind? the ANC, it's the IFP, it's the Freedom Front Plus, okay. it's one of the plethora of other parties that exist there. But it's definitely important that the constitutionalists stand together now Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to the anti-constitutionalists taking control, and I think that would be the worst possible option for South Africa going forward. So what we are facing as the DA is a variety of, of worse options than an MPC outright win, mm -hmm. win, but we're going to have to, amongst those options, select the least worst one. Are you confident that that can actually happen? I'm confident if there's maturity. If what does that mean, though? Well, I think it's being able to accept that you, in, within a coalition environment, which the voters of South Africa have chosen, the, the voters' determination that no party got a majority, mm -hmm. that you are able to find common areas, that you're not going to get everything you want out of a negotiation, that your entire manifesto is not going to be the, 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 the complete uh, focus of a new government, and that there are going to be areas where you've got to compromise on, but you've also got to understand that there are red lines. Mm -hmm. The DA is not desperate to get into government for government's sake. We will do it if it is the best way to prevent mm. an anti-constitutionalist takeover, but we're very 
comfortable sitting on the opposition benches if if that is the requirement. We've done it for 30 years, we've done it very well, and it's that's also an option that's not off the table. Uh, and also, a, uh, a DA-ANC coalition, there's a report in um, Independent Online that was posted on Sunday night that says it's going to create a Yabas environment. Let me explain a Yabas environment. That that where there's a phrase in, in Setswana that says uh, uh, I'll tell you it in English. If you want to get a black man to do anything, get a white man to instruct him. That phrase has been there forever and ever and ever. I can tell you though, a, a modern uh, South African does not agree with that phrase yeah. entirely. Mm. Uh, and, and now Must already... That, angered by that. Yeah, of course. It's, it, 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 so there's an article that speaks to that. It speaks to uh, the whole idea of... Uh, a Yabas uh, type of environment where the ANC will now be having to ask for permission from, from this guy every time before they do anything. And I say that could be at the heart of some of the, uh, the differences that members of the ANC. Because of the inbuilt advantages that white people have had over 320 years, not changed at all fundamentally in the last 30 years, that's why the DA can speak of things like meritocracy, which is code word for a new form of racism. Because if you speak about meritocracy and fit for purpose without historical context and depoliticizing it, um, then that's pure racism. Because if I, as a black child, and that person as a white child, with the unequal openings to a decent education that we still have today, come out at the other end and we are tested on merit laid down by people who have been advantaged way above what they deserve and way above what I needed to do. Well, what, what, what is meritocracy other than? You know, if, if you look at their list, you can see where that leads us. If you have the DA's most prominent black leaders resign one after the other because they can no longer sit in that fog of racism that the DA tries to keep under the surface but pops out every time it matters. So, so those are the issues that we need to keep in mind. If that party is part of the government of national unity, then I don't see how an ANC with its absolutely weak leadership at this particular point in time, can even begin to think that they will be the senior part. The DA will rule the roost whichever way you throw the dice. Whether it is in committees or whether it is in cabinet positions, it doesn't really matter. Um, that is, and, and that is besides the fact that, that, that Mr. Ramaphosa himself is a person under such a dark personal cloud um, that, 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 that he himself has been weakened. Uh, we know him as a, as a person that does not have real political spy. There is no ethical moral compass that anchors. We have seen that ANC for 30 years, it has nothing, it done nothing but uh, to drag the country into chaos. But the coalition part, it will uh, maybe uh, rejuvenate uh, the the economic uh, the economic structures of South Africa. We need the economy to to be good because at at this point it's terrible. If you look at the next five years, it's going to be worse. Eh? We we're literally going to be like Zimbabwe and other countries. So we really need to get to a point where the coalition government works together, these parties work together, all for the same good. I I don't think the parliament is going to be stable because every party has an agenda, its own agenda. So I think there are going to be conflicts among the parties if they try to work together. With party. I think the coalition makes sense because it combines the strength of different parties. The ANC and DA together could bring stability. For me, it's about accountability. A coalition like this could balance power and prevent corruption. These are some of the responses of random people interviewed on the streets. 
having divergent views obviously will emerge because we'll be having people from different political parties having different political postures so it's not necessarily going to be a smooth sailing i think we have we have experienced that through the multiple coalition governments at local government level uh, where, where there's consistent instability within those levels of government and we know that markets don't like uncertainty and then as a result one will expect that to rattle the markets and also to get the rent to weaken let's deal with this issue of the government of national unity we are opposed to the government of national unity in as far as it resembles what was concocted in 1994 we do not want to form any part of a government with representatives of the white colonial and apartheid system and we think now that through fair observation and what got to happen with the democratic alliance and all these minority white parties they represent that agenda that is why the beneficiaries of the white capitalist and apartheid colonial establishment exclusively funded the democratic alliance and all these puppet parties a lot of resources, hundreds of millions, were invested not just to fight the ruling party, the ANC, to fight against the economic freedom fighters. Where you had political organizations who dedicated their energy, their resources, human capital and everything else that they dedicated was against the economic freedom fighters. And today, I publicly declare Julius Malema's EFF to be political enemy number one of the Democratic Alliance. And I commit the DA to fight back against the EFF at every turn with the ultimate aim of defeating the doomsday coalition that could seal South Africa's fate next year. We are not going to form part of any government with the Democratic Alliance. We're not going to sit alongside the Democratic Alliance and Freedom Front Plus in government as the economic freedom fighters and we are not desperate for positions in government we're not going to do everything in our power so that we're appointed into cabinet or we become speakers of parliament and all of those things we're not going to sit alongside the land thieves we're not going to sit alongside the people who got to benefit unlawfully for very long time from colonialism and apartheid we're not going to sit alongside them and constitute government of south africa if the anc wants to choose that road they can go ahead and do what they did in 1994 and we know what are the consequences of what happened in 1994 black people and africans in particular remain on the margins of economic participation in south africa black people more or less stay in the same spaces that they lived under uh, when apartheid had segregated black people to inferior spaces it's still a lived reality racism is still a real reality poverty of our people is still a reality because of this uh, government of national unity if there's gonna be any government of national unity there must be clarity of what unity what are you uniting on and our agenda that we are placing is that it must be the land question that must be at the center of what unites whatever government is going to be constituted must be a common agenda to improve the lives of our people because our people are still on the margins of the economy it must be an agenda to provide free education must be an agenda to protect workers' rights and interests, to enforce minimum wages in all the sectors where they are applicable. That is what the agenda should be all about. It must not just be about position sharing. It must be on principal issues that primarily emancipates and protects the interests of our people. That is the agenda that we are looking into. The survey results show a significant regional differences in Gauteng, the DA has seen a rise to 32%, while the ANC has dropped to 34%. Meanwhile, in KwaZulu-Natal, the MK party is leading with 25% of the vote. This indicates a varied regional support base for the coalition idea. Beyond regional preferences, the survey highlights major issues influencing voters, unemployment, corruption, load shedding, and weak leadership top the list of concerns. Over 80% of respondents feel the country is heading in the wrong direction. 
Interestingly, the ANC's foreign policy has also swayed public opinion. A significant portion of voters, 43%, believe South Africa should align with Western and democratic nations, contrasting with the ANC's current BRICS focused policy. So, what are these South Africans preferring an ANC DA MPC coalition? The data points to a diverse group across different regions, united by a common desire for better governance and solution to pressing issues. We're not, uh, you know, uh, dealing with the discussions from a point of view of locking ourselves into one option. And we're looking at all and of various options. As the 2024 elections have shown, these insights could shape the political landscape. Stay tuned to Inkari. It's time for more updates and in-depth analysis. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Inkari for more content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.